Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline and I create knitting content here on YouTube. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you probably my most requested video up until this point, and that is two at a time mittens. So I tried to make this video more general, and in that sense, I wanted you to be able to apply these steps to any mitten pattern that you have. But the one catch is that this video tutorial is just if the left and the right mitten are exactly the same. So if you have a pattern or something like that on one side of the mitten, the steps are going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, down in the description box below, I have included a pattern for a bulky mitten, which is what I'm showing in this video. So feel free to use that one down below. The pattern is written for a single mitten, but what I'm showing you along with these steps is basically how to take that single mitten pattern and make it two at a time. So I'm going to start off with casting on. So two at a time mittens, you use magic loop. I'm going to start with how to cast on each mitten. Then I'm going to show how to join in the round and begin magic loop. Next up, I'm going to show how to increase your needle sizes. Then we're going to work the thumb increases. I'll show you how to place each stitches, thumb stitches onto waist yarn. And then we're going to continue knitting. And then lastly, I'll come back and show you how to knit the thumbs as well, two at a time. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. It really helps out my channel. And if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. In the description box below, you're also gonna find a couple additional things in addition to that pattern. So you're gonna find each of the video breakpoints for each of the steps I just mentioned, so that way you can fast forward or rewind to a specific location. And you're also gonna find the materials linked that I used in this video. Thanks for watching. So to make two at a time mittens, there's just a couple things you wanna consider when collecting your materials. So first, for things like a stitch marker, if your mitten requires one stitch marker, then you just need to make sure you have two ready because you'll need one for each mitten and you're doing them at the same time. Then up here I have two pieces of waist yarn because I need to hold both sets of thumb stitches. One tapestry needle. Here I have my yarn. And this one is a bulky weight yarn that I'm gonna be using here in the video because I liked how nicely the stripes showed as I was casting on and you can see um, kind of which mittens which as I turn my work. And this one is Premier Yarn Serenity. It says it's a chunky, but then down below it's actually labeled as a bulky, so it's a number five yarn. And the mitten pattern I'm using, it requires about 100 yards, which is perfect for this one. The other yarn that I showed in my last video, uh, but this is a really pretty hand dyed yarn as well. Also a bulky weight yarn. So, the last thing is the knitting needles. So you need whatever size knitting needles your mitten pattern requires. So my mitten pattern requires two different sizes. You need a 10 and a 10 and a half. I use interchangeable knitting needles. And so to start off on the ribbing, I need a US 10. So I have my US 10 knitting needles. And this I think is a 40 or a 42 inch cord. And you definitely don't want to go any smaller than that, just so you have plenty of room when working both mittens at the same time. Then I have my larger knitting needle size. And once I get to that step, I'll put these on a cord and show you how to transfer from one cord to another cord um, when doing two at a time in Magic Loop, just in case you don't have interchangeable knitting needles. And then the last thing that you need that wouldn't be included in any set of materials for a regular one at a time mitten is you need two double pointed needles. And this is actually for when you're casting on. That's the only step you use these for. And basically you cast on your stitches, you're gonna divide them into two, and then you're gonna hold one mitten over here while you cast on your second to your regular mitten. And I'll get into all that in a second. But there are different things that you can use. You could probably find a way to use waste yarn if you don't have two double pointed needles on hand but I found that it is easiest to use double pointed needles and you just wanna make sure they're the same size you're using or a little bit smaller. It doesn't actually matter if they're a little bit smaller just cause you're actually gonna be casting on to your regular size knitting needle and then just holding them here. So it doesn't actually affect your gauge or anything if it is a smaller size. So two double pointed needles. Okay, so now that I've shown you everything that I'm using for my mittens, let's get started casting on. To start casting on, I'm gonna take one ball of yarn, 
And this is my knitting needle size for the ribbing, so my smaller knitting needle size. And I'm just gonna cast on 24 stitches right onto these knitting needles. And as I go along too, I don't have to worry about dividing them or anything like that yet. I'm just gonna cast on right in a row. So if you're using a different mitten pattern, just cast on whatever one mitten requires you to cast on. So I've just finished casting on those stitches. So my next step is I'm gonna slide them over to my cord. And I just wanna find the middle point in those stitches. And now once I find that middle point, I'm gonna separate my stitches a little bit and grab the cord right there in the middle. And now I kind of fold my stitches over and then just pull on the cord until those stitches end up divided in between the two knitting needles. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna take my first double pointed needle and I'm just gonna slide purlwise each one of the stitches from one needle onto there. Now I'm gonna take my second double pointed needle and slide each of the stitches from the other circular knitting needle. Now I just like to leave them in the center of the double pointed needles just so that they're less likely to go anywhere. And now I'm gonna take this ball of yarn with those cast on stitches and move it over to the side. I don't need that one anymore right now. And I'm gonna take my second ball of yarn and again, I'm gonna cast on the same number of stitches to my circular knitting needles. Now that I've cast on those stitches, I'm again gonna slide them all over to the center of my cord. I'm gonna count in to the middle point again. Figure out where the cord is in there. Now I'm gonna pull on the cord until they end up on the knitting needles. Now the way I wanna arrange my knitting needles is I wanna have the knitting needle points over towards the right. And then I kind of hold my knitting needles kind of like on a plane so it's on a flat surface similar to the table. And I call the one further away from me my back needle and the one closer to me my front needle. Now the further away needle, I like to have my working yarn or you should have your working yarn coming out for that for Magic Loop. And then all the bumps should be facing down. So if I go around my loop, let me zoom in and show you real quick. So all my bumps, I want going down and then in this inner corner, you wanna make sure that isn't twisted at all. So mine looks good. And then again, just all the way across the front and make sure it isn't twisted anywhere. It's a lot easier to see here too because I have less stitches if it's twisted or not. But if you have a project that's larger, larger it's a little trickier to see sometimes. Okay, so just to go over again, one more time, what you wanna make sure you have it set up as, you wanna make sure you have your working yarn coming out your back needle, and then you wanna make sure you have all the purl bumps down and knitting needle points pointed towards the right. So now I'm just gonna set that down for a second, and I'm gonna grab my double pointed needles. And I wanna set them up in the same exact way. Now here, I wanna have my working yarn coming out my back needle and there's not really a knitting needle point towards the right, but you wanna have the working yarn coming out the right side of your work. So you want it over here on the right side and not over here on the left side. And then again, you just wanna check that inner corner and make sure it's not twisted and then push all your cast on bumps down. So now if I lay them right next to each other, let me just reorganize my balls of yarn too. If I lay them right next to each other, what I wanna do here is I wanna transfer these stitches right onto this back needle, and then these front stitches right onto this front needle. And I literally, if I could just, you know, like push these knitting needles into here and catch them all, that's exactly what I'd wanna do. 
It's a little trickier to manage them though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide these mitten stitches that are currently on the circular needle just over onto the cord. You don't wanna go all the way over, just so they're a little bit on the cord. And now I'm gonna take my back knitting needle and I'm gonna take these back stitches on my double point needle and I'm gonna slide them over so they're closer to the point. And now I'm gonna just begin slipping each one of those stitches from my double pointed needle onto my circular knitting needle. And you just wanna do it purl wise too, so you don't wanna twist anything. So there's my first one. Now I wanna remake sure that everything's in the right place. So I'm gonna look at this back needle, and basically if I hold up the cord, I wanna make sure that the, all the bumps are still down and there's no twist in the center. And then if I look at my double pointed needle, I wanna make sure there's no twist in the center and all the bumps are down. And now I'm gonna slide this double pointed needle stitches over to the left. Pull this cord out a little bit actually. This one is the one where it's a little trickier to grab all those. So I just have basically my knitting needle. And I'm just gonna start sliding each one of those on. Okay, so now they should all be in the right place on my knitting needles. And how I'm gonna check that is again, I'm just gonna make sure my working yarn is coming out the right side of each mitten. There's no twists and all the bumps are down. And then you also want the working yarn to make sure it's on the back needle. And then this one should be the exact same thing. So the working yarn is coming out the back needle, it's on the right side, and then all my bumps are down. So now that I've set up like this, I'm actually ready to begin my first magic loop round. So for magic loop, there's a couple things to remember. So first I just wanna go over how the knitting's actually gonna work. So we're first gonna go across this first side of the first mitten. Then we're gonna go across the first side of the second mitten. We're gonna turn our work and then we're gonna go across basically the second side of the second mitten and then go across the second side of the first mitten. When you're knitting magic loop, it basically is like you go across the first needle and then you go across the second needle and that makes up one full round. So you have to go across both needles and then that's one round. So here, every time I start a new magic loop um, setup, basically I wanna make sure I have my knitting needle points pointed towards the right and then I wanna have my working yarn coming out my back needle. And when you do this, essentially the work's gonna come out below the knitting needles. So now to start this first round, the first thing I do is I figure out if I want my working yarn to come out from below the knitting needles or to come out up in between the needles and over the back needle. And basically the thing to remember is that if it's a knit stitch as your first stitch, you want the working yarn to come in between the knitting needles and then up over the back needle. If it's a purl stitch, you can leave it down below. And basically that movement of the working yarn prevents you from getting a yarn over at the beginning of each round. So since my first stitch, I'm doing knit one, purl one ribbon, it's gonna be a knit stitch. I'm gonna have my working yarn coming up in between the knitting needles and up over my back needle. And once I get to the second mitten, I'll put it in that same location. And now the other thing you wanna make sure you aren't doing is knitting with your tail. So my tail is pretty long. So I actually think I might just cut it real quick. Just so I don't accidentally start knitting with it. And now the first step is gonna to be to take the back needle or the one that's furthest away from me. And I wanna take it and I wanna pull it towards the right. And when I do that, this side over here, there's gonna be less cord. And you basically wanna pull it 
until you have enough to move it around and knit easily with it. But you don't want to pull it so much that this gap closes up and basically all the stitches are all the way through the cord and there's no extra cord left over here. It's important to always have extra cord over here on the left hand side. Okay, so now I'm ready to begin knitting across this first mitten. So I'm going to do a knit one. And then purl one all the way across. And now that I've finished that first mitten, I'm just going to pull my cord a little bit more. So basically I have more cord over here on the right hand side. So I do that by pulling the cord that's further away from me, not the cord that has the knitting needle attached to it. And now I'm just going to slide that bin over a little bit. Again, you want to make sure you have extra cord over here. You can leave it a little bit on the knitting needle too if you want to. And I'm going to take my second mitten, which is the one I haven't worked yet, and I'm going to slide it so it's all the way up on the knitting needle. And now again, I need to make sure my working yarn is coming up over the back needle. So right now we don't really have a needle, but you want to make sure it's coming up in between the knitting needles and then over the back if you're starting off with a knit stitch. And now I'm just going to take that right knitting needle point and I'm just going to go right into that first stitch on the second mitten. And again, do knit one, purl one ribbing all the way across. Now that I finished that second mitten, my knitting needle point is pointed towards the left. And what I want to do is I want to re-thread in my back knitting needle so the stitches end up on it. And again, I'm going to retake my knitting needles and I'm going to point them towards the right again. And when I want to make sure that my working yarn is coming out the back knitting needle so the one furthest away from me. And I'm just going to push my work so it's all facing down or like the bumps are coming down below the knitting needles. And I'm just going to reorganize my yarn a little bit here too. Untangle it. And again, my knitting needles are pointed towards the right. My working yarn is coming out the knitting needle that's in the back or the one that's furthest away from me. And if you're starting out with a knitting stitch, you want to take your working yarn, go in between your knitting needles from the bottom and then up over that back needle. And to start knitting, you're going to pull through the back needle or pull towards the right and then just go right into that first stitch. If you're working a purl stitch as your first one, you're going to leave the yarn down below and then just pull through the right or sorry, pull through the back knitting needle and then just go right into that first stitch as if you're going to purl. And now I'm going to go all the way across both of these mittens on this side. And here too, I just want to point out real quick that as I'm knitting along, I always make sure I have cord on both sides. So I have a little bit of cord over here to the right. And then I also have cord over here to the left. And if it ever happens where your knitting, your knitting closes up around the cord, you just refine that middle location, take the cord, and then just pull the stitches again so that they redivide between the two knitting needles. So now that I finished that second side of that mitten, I'm going to slide it over a little bit towards the right, get a little bit of extra cord over there. Now I'm going to take the other mitten, slide it up onto my left knitting needle. Make sure that my working yarn is coming out in between and up over that back needle. Now I'm just going to go right into that first stitch and I'm working a knit stitch, so I'm going to knit that stitch. If you're working the purl stitch again, you'd want the working yarn to come out from below. Now 
Now that I've finished going across that second side, I've now completed one full round. So again, I'm gonna re-thread in my back knitting needle. And I'm gonna reposition my knitting needles so that they're pointed towards the right. My working yarn is coming out the knitting needle that's further away from me. So now again, every round, or every time I go across one side, I'm gonna make sure my knitting needles are pointed towards the right. Working yarn's coming out the back needle. I'm gonna get my working yarn ready, depending on if I'm knitting or purling that first stitch. And then I'm gonna take that back knitting needle, or the one further away from me, pull it towards the right, and then just begin working that first stitch. So now I'm gonna continue working the ribbing as it's described in the pattern. So just do knit one, purl one ribbing for an inch and a half. I've now finished the ribbing and I'm ready to increase my knitting needle size. So over here, I have another long cord with my larger knitting needle on it. And to do this for magic loop, what I like to do is I take this back needle um, so like the one further away from me, and I'm just going to pull it towards the right, and then I'm just going to let it hang down on the table. It just gives me a little bit more flexibility with the work. Now I'm going to take my new larger knitting needle and go straight into that first stitch on my mitten, and then do whatever the pattern says to do for this round. So for me, it's just knit all the way across this round. Now again, I'm gonna take my knitting needle, my new knitting needle that's larger, and begin knitting right across the second mitten. Now I finished going across the first side with my new knitting needle. So what I wanna do is I wanna take my old knitting needle over here on the left, and I just wanna re-thread that in to the back portion of my work. So now when I look at my work from the top, the knitting needle closest to me is my largest knitting needle, and the knitting needle furthest away from me is my old knitting needle. Now, I wanna turn my work so that my knitting needle points are pointed over towards the right, and I'm gonna take my new knitting needle, pull it towards the right, and I'm gonna pull it quite a bit too so that I have a lot of cord to work with over here. And now I'm gonna finish working the other side of each mitten. So now that I've finished going across the second side, I don't have any stitches left on my old cord or my smaller knitting needle size. So I can just move that over to the side. And now I'm just gonna reset up my new knitting needle for magic loop. So I'm just gonna re-thread in my second needle. And now I have, again, it's just like I'm set up for magic loop. So I have my knitting needle points over towards the right. Working yarn is coming out up over my back needle. Next up, I'm gonna show the first round of increases. So my increase round is a make one left then knit across the rest of the round for each mitten. So to do that, first I'm gonna do my increase on the first mitten, then I'm gonna place my marker and knit all the way across this first side. Then on the second mitten, I'm gonna do my make one left, place my marker and knit all the way across the front side of this mitten. Then I'm gonna turn my work and knit across the back side of each mitten, because again, we have to go across both sides before it's one full round. So to start off, I'm just gonna pull my back needle point over towards the right. And now I need to do a make one left. So you wanna pick up the bar in between the stitch you just worked and the one you're about to work from front to back. And now you wanna knit into the back of that loop. Now I'm gonna place my marker and finish knitting 
all the way across the front of this first mitten. Now again on the second mitten, I'm going to do a make one left again. So a magic loop it can be a little bit tricky too because the stitches aren't right next to each other. It's basically like you have to pick up the bar in between the back needle and the front needle. So I just tend to stretch out my work as I'm doing it just to find it. Place my marker. And now continue knitting across the front side of this mitten. Now I'm going to turn my work. And I'm just going to knit across the back side of each one of these mittens. And that'll be my first increase round. So now I finished my first increase round. So now I'm just going to continue working the increases as written down below. And the important thing to remember is just that whatever it says, let's say it says knit one round, you have to knit all the way across the front needle and all the way across the back needle, and that makes up one round. Or if it says do an increase round, you have to increase on each front needle and then just knit across each back needle. And then you always want to make sure when you start the next round, you're back at the beginning of the round. And now I have a stitch marker, which makes it easier to tell where my beginning of the round is. But I also go just based off of where my tail is. So I know that when my tails are over towards the right, I'm back at the beginning of the round. So again, now I'm going to continue working the thumb increases until I've completed those. And then I'll come back and show you how to place the stitches on waist yarn. I'm now ready to place the thumb stitches on waist yarn. So the materials I have ready are just a tapestry needle. And then I have two separate pieces of waist yarn, one for each mitten. So first I'm just going to go across the first mitten and slip each one of those thumb stitches purlwise onto my first piece of waist yarn. going to thread the waist yarn so basically the stitches are in the middle of it and take off my stitch marker. Now I usually just tie a little bow just to keep these secure. Now I want to just reposition my needles so that both the work is close to the tips of each one of them. And now I'm just going to basically do magic loop across the front side of this first mitten. So I'm going to pull my back needle towards the right and just knit across my remaining stitches. If your pattern has you cast on one stitch at the beginning of the round, you're going to want to do that before you begin knitting across. Now I'm going to re-thread my tapestry needle with my second piece of waist yarn. Slide my second mitten up so it's on that left needle. And again, just slide each one of those thumb stitches purlwise onto the waist yarn. And now I'm going to continue knitting across the front of the second mitten. Okay, now that I've shown you how to place each set of thumb stitches onto the waist yarn, I'm going to continue knitting my mitten all the way up until the top, do the decreases, and do my Kitchener stitch bind off. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how to pick up and do two at a time magic loop on the thumbs. The last tricky part with two at a time magic loop mittens can be picking up the thumb stitches. So how I like to do it is I lay both of the mittens down side by side with the thumbs on the left. And now I take my knitting needle size, the larger size that used on the body of mitten. And first, going from right to left, I'm going to pick up half the thumb stitches on this first mitten. And 
Now I'm gonna pull the knitting needle towards the left so that first mitten's just on the cord. And now I'm gonna pick up the first half of the stitches on the thumb of the second mitten. Okay, now I'm just gonna move them so they're a little bit closer together, so the two mittens are closer together. And I'm gonna turn my work over. And now I wanna take my knitting needle that's basically threaded through the two mittens, and I'm gonna pull it towards the right. Basically what this is doing is it's moving my other knitting needle point up closer to the top of those two mittens. Now I'm just gonna spread the mittens further apart again, and I'm gonna pick up the second half of the stitches on the thumb. Again, now I'm going, again, from right to left. I'm gonna again pull my knitting needle over towards the left. So this mitten's just on the cord now. Now I have the two thumbs on my knitting needle. And I'm just actually gonna move that second glove so the mitten's basically behind it <laughs> rather than in between the cord. Now that I've picked up those thumb stitches, I've also taken out my waist yarn out of each of them. What I wanna do is I wanna restart magic loop and rejoin my yarn. So I'm gonna pull my back needle towards the right, go into that first stitch on the first mitten as if to knit. And I'm just gonna rejoin my yarn for the first mitten. Then again for the second mitten, I'm gonna take my second ball of yarn and rejoin it over here. Now I'm gonna turn my work. And I like to tuck the little tails inside of the thumbs. That way they don't get in the way and I don't accidentally knit with them. And now on this side, I also need to pick up one stitch so first I'm gonna knit over to that inside edge where the thumb meets the mitten. And I'm gonna pick up one stitch from that inner edge. I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the second mitten. Now I can continue knitting round after round until I'm all finished the thumb, do my decreases, and cast off. Thank you so much for checking out this tutorial. Again, here are my finished mittens. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. And also give this video a like if you enjoyed it. It really helps out my channel. Thanks for watching.